Welcome into Duval Daily, presented by GenJag.com. I'm Jordan DeLugo. Thanks so much for tuning in here on Wednesday, December 20th. Today, we are looking at the Jaguars' front office, the general manager position. The question that many have been asking this week after the Jaguars have lost three straight games down the stretch, they fall to 8-6. and six. They're now just tied for the AFC South lead with the Colts and Texans. They do have the tiebreaker, though. So as things stand right now, the Jaguars would make the playoffs, but this is a team that was 8-3 a team that is clearly sliding over the last three weeks, over the last month or so, uh, not looking good in Jacksonville right now. There's no question about that. So the question is, is Trent Balky the man to get the Jaguars over the top? Is he the general manager that is going to build this roster into a true Super Bowl contender? The answer requires a lot more context than many are willing to really look at and evaluate, but I'm going to do my best to answer the question right now. Really, the most important aspects of being a GM are scouting, both individually as a scout and with your entire scouting department, you know, both pro and college, you know, decision making in the moment, creativity with contracts, with trades, et cetera, workplace culture, and self evaluation every year, every week, right? Self evaluation of what you've done to create this roster. I know a lot of people don't really care about anything other than the 53 players on the roster, but being a general manager does include a lot more than just building the 53, right? Uh, but I know that that's what people focus on. For me, if you're a general manager, a good general manager, you must work to improve the areas of your roster. And in some ways, you've got to leave your ego at the door, right? If you have made a mistake on a player or on a position, it's not working out, don't double down. You've got to go fix the problem, right? Uh, I think that the Jaguars, from a workplace culture standpoint with Trent Baalke, Doug Peterson, and company, the way they interact with the the players and the staff, I think it's good. I don't think there's any issues there. I do think Trent Baalke has a good relationship with these players. Um, the ultimate question, though, that many a- ask and many want answered. Does Trent Baalke have what it takes to build a roster that can win a Super Bowl here in Jacksonville? In order to answer that question, I think you have to look at his history as the Jaguars general manager over the last three years. I think when it comes to talent evaluation overall, he's done a decent job. It's definitely not been awful from a talent evaluation standpoint. His 2021 free agency class, his first class as Jaguars GM, it was a mixed bag. You know, Rayshon Jenkins, in my opinion, was a base hit. This is a guy that does make big plays. I think he does approach being a pro the right way, but overall not a consistent starting safety in this league. Jamal Agnew, probably a double just based off what he's done for you on special teams at times. You know, Shaquille Griffin was obviously a miss. I think Marvin Jones was probably a single. He did some good things for you here in Jacksonville for a couple years as a possession receiver. Roy Robertson Harris, probably a single at the time. I think double, doubling down on him this past offseason might not have been the best decision. All the other incoming guys that year were probably whiffs overall. Not a great free agency class, obviously. Um, but the 2021 draft class, I think, was excellent overall. Trevor Lawrence, easy at one overall. Travis Etienne, Tyson Campbell, Walker Little, Andre Sisco. I think getting Luke Farrell on day Day three of that draft was good. J2 Fele was a decent player. I never agreed with trading up for Jordan Smith. In the fourth round, he's no longer on a team right now. Obviously, dealt with the knee injury last year that has not helped out his progress as a pro. Um, so overall in 2021, I think you had a great great draft class. I think that you had average at best free agency. In 2022, free agency was an unquestioned win for Trent Baalke. Foye Aluokan, awesome player. Christian Kirk, awesome slot player. Brandon Sheriff, even though he gets a lot of heat from fans, this is a guy that still does... Uh, protect the quarterback at an extremely high level, and he battles through injuries. Evan Ingram was a home run. Darius Williams was a big-time hit. Uh, so I think that the Jaguars' 2022 free agency class was excellent. Zay Jones, he has made some big plays, but I think overall he's average as a wide receiver three, and you're paying him a decent amount. I think Foley Fatu Kasi overall probably has been a whiff, you know, in large part due to injuries, but that's kind of how it goes sometimes. Uh, but overall that was just – like I said, a great free agency class for the Jaguars. The draft, I never agreed with Trayvon Walker at one overall. Did not like that pick at the time. I do like the player. I like the the person that they brought into this building. But to me, there was Im- 
immediate impact players, immediate high impact players that were available at that point in the draft, you know, at first overall, that I think that could have come in and done a better job for the Jaguars overall. Uh, Devin Lloyd, I think, is playing really well right now overall in his second season. Yes, there have been some mistakes, but there's been mistakes, myriad mistakes by the entire Jags defense, you know, for much of the last three weeks or so. Played better against the Ravens. But I love that trade up at the time. We're going to talk about, um, again, I think that talent evaluation there, not a problem. Team building is something we're going to have to talk about, though, down the road here. Luke Fortner, I think overall, I liked the pick at the time, has been a whiff. I don't think he is a quality starting center. He cannot provide any help to you in the running game, which is a major issue for the Jaguars right now. Chad Muma, solid pick in the third round from a talent standpoint. But again, we're talking about team building a little bit. That's going to come up later. Snoop Connor, nothing burger. Um, I think that Gregory Jr. and Buster Brown were both really good picks late. You know, these are guys that have staying power on the roster. 2023, Trent Baalke stood on his hands in free agency. After a playoff run, after a 9-8 and eight season, you know, they went on an unbelievable heater down the stretch, the Jaguars did, but he stood on his hands in free agency. They did not do much to improve this roster following the 2022 season. They did go out and get Calvin Ridley, which I thought was obviously, I thought it was a great move at the time. It's been a mixed bag so far, right? You're giving up multiple draft picks. We're going to see how it turns out. He has not been the true wide receiver one that I think a lot of people, including myself, expected. But uh, you should have expected some rust early on in the season. I think at this point, though, probably not playing at the level that many had hoped. So I think overall, when you talk about improving your roster through free agency and, and via trades heading into 2023, did not do a good job. The draft, you know, trading down in the first round and landing Anton Harrison, I think was brilliant. I think it was awesome. Great move. I think Anton Harrison is going to be a, a pillar at tackle for the Jaguars for a long time. But adding a wide tight end in round two when you could have had a bunch of Impact receivers, you could have had a guy like Tucker Craft who could do the wide tight end stuff for you and I think is a little bit better overall than Brenton Strange, a guy I had higher on my board. Uh, there were a bunch of quality edge rushers available at the time. There were offensive linemen that could have come in and helped on the interior. I had a third round grade on Strange. I think he is a good player. I think that he has helped the Jaguars when he's been on the field, you know, being able to get them into 13 personnel. But was that the best use of that resource? Was that the best thing you could have done for team building? Well, I don't, I don't know at this point. Third round, you take a running back that you aren't willing to use at this point in the season and tank Bigsby. I think he will be a good runner in this league. But again, team building. Those two picks are not having the impact that a second and third round pick need to have in a year where you did not add to your roster in free agency. Another linebacker in the fourth round. So you went out and signed Foye Aluokan to a big, big deal at linebacker. You traded up for another off-ball linebacker in the first round. You went and drafted a linebacker in the third round of that same year. And then the next year, you draft another linebacker who is on not on a lot of teams' boards because of injuries in the fourth round. Again, team building. Day three, I think you definitely did have some hits this year. Obviously, Antonio Johnson should have never been available as late as he was. Same thing with Parker Washington. I like Braswell. Some of the other DBs they added. Cooper Hodges is a guy they like a lot on the interior. Again, I do like Britton Strange and Tank Bigsby, the players, the people. But as I've said, I would not have made those picks at those spots. I would not have drafted Trayvon Walker at one overall. And I would not have stood on my hands in free agency this offseason. For me, when it comes to talent evaluation, Trent Baalke is decent. Everyone has misses and lots of them, you know, that's been in this league a long time. But for me, where he really struggles is team building. Again, you have massively over-invested at off-ball linebacker. What's that doing for you? I'm glad they brought in Foye. Glad they brought in Devin. But why did you then need to add Chad Muma? Why didn't then did you need to add Mentrell Miller, right? It doesn't make sense to me. He's massively overinvested at running back with mixed results overall. I do love Travis Etienne, but first round pick at running back. You need to be an absolute star. I think Etienne is a star. I do think that there's some issues with vision. I think that obviously the uh, run blocking for the Jaguars has really struggled for them. 
But again, running back in the first round, that guy needs to be playing his mind like like playing out of his mind. And for me, right now, Travis Etienne is not able to do that partially because of the run blocking, partially because they're trying to run a lot more gap principles. And I think he's a guy that just needs to be, you know, running outside of the tackles for the most part. But it is what it is. Again, team building. They have not been able to draft wide receivers. They have not really tried to draft wide receivers outside of Parker Washington on day three of this year. It's all been medium to high-priced free agents or trades like Calvin Ridley. And that group is not good enough for how much they're making. Bottom line, I don't think that they are performing commensurate to what they are being paid. I think that Trent Baalke has whiffed on the interior defensive line. Although we probably wouldn't be saying that if Devon Hamilton didn't have the health issue this year. I think that overall the investments made in Roy Robertson Harris this offseason and Foley Fatu Kasi the year before probably were not necessary and probably you could have done a better job building that that room. At edge, I mean, my goodness. How could you not bring in better edge depth this year? I, I don't know. I think you look at all these other teams around the league that have really good pass rushes. They bring in multiple waves of good edge rushers. The Jaguars only have Josh Allen as a consistent pass rusher right now. Trayvon Walker is growing. He is getting better. But he's not a consistent pass rusher right now either. Yeah, he just he's coming off a great game. But he's not a consistent pass rusher week to week right now. Bottom line, I, I think the edge depth is atrocious. I think that that was so obvious to everyone on the planet besides Trent Baalke. I mean, what are you doing? You mostly stood pat with your roster after the 2022 season, after a 9-8 and eight year where you went on a magical run to end the season. You just stood pat for the most part out of Calvin Ridley, outside of Calvin Ridley. Now, if the Jaguars had had great injury luck this year, the same way they had the year before, they're probably comfortably in first place in the AFC South. But they haven't. And guess what? Every team deals with injuries. Has it derailed the Browns, the Bengals, these other teams that are fighting for playoff spots? No. They still look competitive week in and week out. Despite the injuries. Despite having really more injuries than the Jaguars have had. For me, I would like to see a new direction in the front office. I said that last year. I said that the year before. I think the talent evaluation part is okay for Trent Baalke. I think the culture is fine. But I think the team building has been pretty awful over the last calendar year especially. I think not addressing the obvious needs of your roster heading into 2023 is a whiff. I really do. If I'm Shad Khan, Jaguars owner, the only way Trent Baalke has his job in 2024 is if he comes to me with an honest evaluation of what went wrong this year and how he's going to fix it. And that has to include some of the areas that I think that he tried to double down on this year instead of trying to fix. Will Shad Khan hold him to that standard, or will he say, well, we were injured, we're in a pretty good place moving forward? We'll find out. I think these last three games will go a long way towards determining that. Like, if the Jaguars make the playoffs, I really do doubt that they're going to make a move. But if they miss the playoffs, perhaps they will They will make changes. I think it's clear already that this offseason was a massive whiff regardless of what happens in the next three games. So for me, again, I would like to see a new direction. Will that happen? I tend to lean towards no. I think you've seen Shad Khan be very patient as an owner over his tenure as the Jaguars owner. So I, I lean towards, you know, no big changes being made in the front office. Um, Will Trent Baalke, if he retains his job, be able to course correct the problems that happened this offseason? Will he be able to upgrade the interior of the offensive line, the interior of the defensive line, the wide receiver room, the edge depth? We'll find out. We will find out. Really appreciate y'all tuning in. Would love to know what you think. You can hit me up on Twitter at Jordan DeLugo. You can also drop a comment in the comment section below. If you enjoy the content, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. You can also check out ginjag.com slash shop and pick up some new Duval gear. We have got our holiday sale going on right now through Thursday, December 21st, 30% off at ginjag.com with code happy holidays. Really appreciate y'all. Have a good one.